Okay, looking at our first source, we'll start by finding company from LinkedIn. Um, so we're going to be doing two things here. We're going to first find companies from LinkedIn, and then we're going to add more companies um, to there while excluding the companies we already found, which is a pretty cool nifty future that um, Clay pretty recently introduced. So this is, you know, um, what that screen looks like. You have a couple of options here. You can start with lookalikes, which it will be, you know, somewhat accurate. Like it's, um, it's definitely worth exploring. It won't be as accurate as, for example, getting lookalikes from um, from Ocean.io or a provider like that, but it can at times be interesting to explore it. It's not something I very frequently use, but um, uh, I can see it, you know, getting some deep. Like if you don't need your results to be absolutely perfect or you're saying, listen, let's do the lookalike and we'll use clay then later to filter out the ones that are not a good fit, then yeah, it could definitely be... Uh, Definitely be an interesting way to build your list. Won't be doing it in this video because in the end, um, how will be you doing it in this video? It's the exact same workflow um, as, you know, uh, as, as starting with lookalikes. So lookalikes is one option. Then um, you can have a description. You can uh, put a description here and they'll match this against, you know, description they have um it's like it's not a real-time search on linkedin so they're working with uh with a database solution which is why they're able to um to pull some of this stuff off which is you know at times pretty important to um uh to note as well and then this exclude companies will uh, touch on that later first, you know, here, nothing really too, you know, too, um, uh, uh, too special about this. Let's start with, you know, um, building a really basic list, uh, advertising service and market services, you can exclude industries. Um, you know, there's obviously company size that you can have in here, basically all the filters that you would find on LinkedIn you can uh you can put them in here so imagine we want to build a bit of a list of you know marketing agencies uh, or at least the base of a list of marketing agencies within the us this is how we would do it um then you know we can limit those results if we want uh we can get 25 records at most so this is, you know, what a basic search would be. If you're using LinkedIn as a source, then you can preview what that looks like. And then obviously, um, you know, you can adjust the filters accordingly. So here we got 500 companies as we wanted. You can import those to a new table or you if imagine you already have an existing table, maybe a previous search that you did and you just want to, let's say, replenish that one, then you can do it that way. But we'll import them to a new table. Then you can add additional um, enrichments to that. So you can get the full profile, but you pay a credit per profile. You can get, you know, account growth, the recent news, technology stack that they're using the full stack, and maybe job openings that they have or uh, total funding. All of that will cost you credits. We won't be using that. We'll just go with the basic profile and we'll add that to our table. Then here we have the table. As you can see, it's still populating. So guys, the first 50, we'll add the other 452 here now. Um, sometimes you got to refresh the table. Sometimes it will take a second. So here we have, you know, company name, company description, which is often the long description, which is, uh, um, or, you know, which is better than, for example, getting it from, um, um, from Apollo. So, Obviously, obviously not, but usually the description here is longer than the one you get from Apollo. So if you want to run, let's say, GPT prompts on the description, then this one usually is pretty good for that. 
the industry company size can be type, the location, the country, the domain, and the LinkedIn URL. So that's what you get from search for finding companies on LinkedIn. Then from here, you can go ahead and find people at these companies. Um, and that's what we'll be doing next. And then we'll be then replenishing that data set. So let's um, uh, call this uh, tutorial find companies data table or find companies table. This is the main table. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go back here and we're going to create a new table where we'll find people from LinkedIn. And then we go to companies, then clay table, and then we will find the claim table that we just built. So this one right here, then there are 500 companies in there. And then what we want to say is, for example, we want the owners. Um, so let's say owner and founder, um, see, uh, uh, CEO, um, president, now let's just go with, you know, owner, founder, CEO. Again, these are all the filters that you'll find on LinkedIn as well. So you can, you know, um, get creative here, but, um, we already know, okay, the targetings are right. These are marketing agencies. We just want to find, you know, the owner and the founder of these agencies. Um, you can get a bit more creative here and say, okay, only get me the owners if they have, you know, PPC or SEO, for example, in their about section, then, you know, okay, you know, you, you, you're a bit more targeted. You're likely, you know, um, reaching out to owners who are interested in see an SEO or PPC, for example, then certifications, uh, the same, they might have like a specific certification that can be pretty interesting if, um, Imagine you're not doing owners or founders, but you're saying, okay, at these agencies, I want to reach out to, you know, their marketing people, so the internal marketing people, but only the ones that are interested in HubSpot because I'm selling like a HubSpot course, for example, events HubSpot course, then that is how you can find the right contact at that company. So instead of saying, okay, I'm just going to reach out to every marketing agency that works with HubSpot and reach out, I'm going to reach out to the ones I know have HubSpot certifications and I can tell them, okay, you can, you know, um, uh, get upskilled with, with our course. Really basic example, not a great example, but just to give you an idea of how you can use that certification filter here. Um, then again, these are all the filters that you have on, um, uh, on LinkedIn as well. We'll hit preview people. We can limit the results, not really useful in this case. Then, uh, if found 70 out of 500 people, then we'll import that to a new table and just a basic profile. And that is absolutely free. So here are these people, um, and it will actually find them. So it will use the, um, table lookup future, which is something that we'll touch on later in the course but it is automatically set that up for us, which is, uh, again, a pretty neat future, um, from, um, from clay. Then, uh, one way you can use the limit results function is by saying, okay, only one person per company. And, um, so that's one way you could use it because you can see we have some, some, you know, duplicates here, I suppose. Then we get their first name, last name, full name, job title, their location, their company domain, and their LinkedIn profile URL. So that's all very helpful in easily getting their contact information. That's that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go back because imagine we did a campaign to these people, reach, reach out to all these people, but we want to uh, replenish that list. We want to add more people to the same campaign. So we have these tables. We're finding companies, we're finding people, we're pushing this to smart lead or HubSpot or our sequencer. And at some point the campaign is running low on leads. Then what we can do is um, we can find more companies. So you go in here, then in the same table, there's this little icon right here, or you can do it from here, but you know, this icon right here then you pretty much perform the same search here because you're starting in this table, it automatically excludes 
all the um, all the other companies in here. But imagine that um, you know you hit the row limit. For example, there are fifty thousand rows in here. You have a new table. Then you can select whatever other table you already had, and it will ex exclude the companies from that table. So if you have multiple campaigns, maybe to uh, more or less the same audience, you can. Um, uh, exclude it from here. There are multiple use cases, but it's a great future that I want to make sure that you're aware of where if you have multiple LinkedIn company search tables, you can exclude the people um, uh, people in here then, or the companies in this case, then, you know, the, um, um, what did we say? Advertising services and marketing. So we will just do the same search more or less. Uh, and let's see, I think it was the search we went with. Um, and we'll again go with just 500 companies and they, well, I had agency in there as well, but not really relevant because we're just showing how this works. And then, um, you can get another 500 companies in here, or you could have created a new table in case you want to keep things separate and then you can exclude them from the search in the way that we just showed by having that by selecting the table in the exclude function so that's that and then in here in this table as you can see it will automatically add new rows to here so whenever we have new companies coming into the company table it will automatically then find you know whatever filter we set up here owner founder at those new tables so that's a really great way to um have like an ongoing feed of of you know of companies so you can just really easily scoop as we call it or replenish your campaigns this way or imagine you're working with clients it's a new month you want new leads in there you add them that way and it's a really great future and really um sort of workflow that clay has where you find companies from linkedin you find people at those companies from linkedin it's all for free and then if at some point you want to add more you can just really easily add more this way and that's how we use linkedin as a source